وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى we're going to be starting a series where we will talk about 10 things that if you come with inshallah ta'ala success will come your way inshallah ta'ala you will attain success bi'idhnillahi al-kareem but before i start what i want to say is the slave who allah tabarak wa ta'ala has chosen is blessed will strive to perfect his nafs the quality that you will see in a slave who allah has chosen allah has blessed is that every day that goes by in their life, they will try to perfect some of their mistakes and their errors. There is no human on the face of this earth who is errorless. Every human has a deficiency, whoever that person may be. And there's always things that you can do to improve yourself. As they say, there's always room for improvement. And for you to believe that you are errorless and that you are infallible, that you don't do no mistakes, it's the whispers of shaitan. It is from the what? The whispers of shaitan. We are all fallible, right? We're all open to errors and mistakes. That's why the Prophet said in authentic hadith that all of the children of Adam are what? They are all sinners. Powerful. And then look what the hadith said after that. And the best from within the sinners. And those who wrong, the best from amongst them. And he didn't say the ones who are perfect. He says the ones who do wrong, the best amongst them is the one who come back running to Allah for forgiveness. We all together. So, Al-Abdul Muwaffaq, a slave who Allah has chosen, selected, Allah has given them, MashaAllah, khair and good. One of the qualities that you will tend to find in them is they are always trying to work towards perfecting themselves. And sometimes your errors and your mistakes could come to you from someone who is younger than you. It could also sometimes come to you from someone who is what? Older than you. And sometimes it could even come to you from someone who is insignificant in, in the eyes of the people, but they could point out something very valid and good. So always look for that yani rectification and change that you want to get for yourself. And, get, and to get rid of uh, the evil that are within ourselves. And by working towards brothers and sisters, working towards what? Islahul nafs. Working towards perfecting your nafs and purifying it, and cleaning it, and cleansing it, it's one of the greatest things in this world, and in the hereafter. Okay? And it is a matlabun azimun wa ghayatun jalila. It's a great ultimate goal, Salma. Okay? It's a great goal to attain, to be someone who does that all the time. And if we look at the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, and we look at his students, the companions, you will find that they, they did that. They worked on themselves and they always worried about how their situation is going to be. Uthman ibn Affanin, ta'ala anhu, he said, Bayna ana jalisun fi dhillin utumin min al -atami. One day, I was sitting under a shade of a building from the buildings of Medina. Uthman is saying this. I was sitting under the shade. Dhill is a shade. I mean, the sun was blocking to the shade. And people, the Sahabas used to do that a lot. They liked to look for the shade because it's very hot. There was no air conditioning or anything like that. Even when the Prophet used to talk sometimes, uh, or the beginning, when the Prophet used to talk, the Sahabas, they couldn't sit right next to him because the sun is hitting their head. So they would all kind of move away from him and they would all look for the shade. And the Prophet told them off. He said, why is it that I see you all scattered? And then the Prophet said, all of you come together, come close. And the Sahabi said, that the, uh, the companions, they came so close to each other, okay, that if a person was to throw a cloth, all of them would fall under that cloth. That's how tight and close they, close they became to each other. Are we all together? So Uthman is saying, بَيْنَا أَنَا جَارِسٌ فِي ظِلِّ أُطُومٍ مِنْ أَطَامِ الْمَدِينَةِ أَمَّا فِي أَطَامٍ I was under a shade from the buildings of Medina. 
And the Prophet ﷺ, even one time, he climbed a building, a high building in Medina. And then when he stood on top of the building, and he, he stood on top of it, the Prophet looked at the people's houses. Okay? And then he said, alayhi salatu wasalam, inni ara al-fitan khilala buyutikum kamawaqi' al-qatar. I see the fitna, the trials and the tribulations entering your households. Like when the rain comes down, the way it enters your houses. Because those people's houses were not made out of what, it's, what our houses are made out of. The houses were straws and things like that. So sometimes the rain will penetrate through to the building. The same way that the water drips into your houses and it comes in, the fitna will enter your houses like that. So a lot of the times fitna of shaitan and yani, fasad comes into people's houses, right? The Prophet already told us that this is something that's going to that's gonna happen. Alayhi salatu, alayhi salatu salam. So Uthman said, I was sitting and I was under a shade one day. Utum min al and then marra alayya Umar. Umar radiallahu anhu went by me. Fasallam alayhi, he said salam alaykum to me. Falam ash'ur, I didn't even feel like someone went by. So it seems like maybe he was distracted. So he said, I didn't feel annahu marra. Wala sallama. I didn't realize Umar went by and I didn't even realize that he gave me salams. And by the way, Umar's presence was always felt. felt. Umar was a very strong individual. And he was very tall. So Umar radiallahu anhu, his legs would touch the floor if he sat on a horse. That's how tall Umar radiallahu anhu was. He wasn't a short person. The same was Khalid ibn Walid. Yani they said in the market, the Suq of Uqaba, that was a yearly market that the Sahabas all used to come to. And all the Quraysh and all of the people before Islam, they used to come to this market. It was like a, it was like a, a yearly thing. Hajj time, everybody would come. They would sell their products. They would export it. And from other countries, they would, this was... You would not miss that market. They said if Umar and Khalid were in the market, they would all stick out from the rest of the people. That's how they were told. So Uthman said, I didn't even realize Umar went by. So then that means he was really, he was distracted. And he said, I don't even know, I didn't realize that he even gave me what? Salam. فَانْطَلَقَ Umar رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ Umar went by. Hey, give the microphone to Ibrahim. He has a question that he wants to ask. No, Umar radiallahu anhu was like that. The story later is going to find out. We haven't finished the story yet. Within the story is going to find out. So, Uthman radiallahu anhu, what happened? He sitting, and then what happened was, Umar went by, and he gave him salams, and Uthman didn't respond. Quiet, and he didn't even feel it. Hatta dakala ala Abi Bakrin. Umar went and he entered into who? Abi Bakr. And he said to Abu Bakr, مَا يُعْجِبُكَ أَنِّي مَرَرْتُ عَلَىٰ عُثْمَانَ فَسَلَّمْتُ عَلَيْهِ فَلَمْ يَرُدَّ عَلَيَّ السَّلَامِ Fascination and wonder. I came by Uthman today, and I said salam alaykum to him, and he never even responded to me. Who's saying this? Umar radiallahu anhu is saying this about who? Uthman. Now I want to I I I mention a story here. A big, a very powerful story, even though it's an istidrad, I'm going off topic. I think inshallah ta'ala, my children can benefit from it, and inshallah ta'ala, everybody else who's watching can benefit from it. Pay attention to this story. The story is, no one is perfect, as I said at the beginning, right? Errors and mistakes and shortcomings always occur, right? There's a story that was mentioned, that one time Umar and Abu Bakr, they had a conflict. These are the two best men after all the prophets. Between who? Abu Bakr and the two best men who ever walked on this earth. After all the prophets, who's the best man? Abu Bakr. After that, Umar. They had a conflict. Something happened. So Abu Bakr realized what he did. He realized he, he, he was wrong. So Abu Bakr went to Umar. Abu Bakr went to who? Abu Bakr went to Umar. And Abu Bakr said to Umar, forgive me. Umar was a bit strong and tough, so he said, no, I'm not going to forgive you. Who did he say that to? He said that to Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr said, please forgive me. He said, no. Abu Bakr went, and who did he go to? Abu Bakr went to the Prophet ﷺ. Abu Bakr went, got up, and he went to the Prophet ﷺ. Now the Prophet was sitting down, and Abu Bakr came walking from far, and where was he coming from? He was coming from Umar, who he asked for forgiveness. But Abu Bakr is coming towards the Prophet 
When the Prophet saw Abu Bakr walking, the Prophet said to the companions who he was sitting with, he said, Amma sahibukum faqad ghamar. Because Abu Bakr and the Prophet were very close and they were the best two friends. Very close friends. Abu Bakr knew the Prophet more than anybody else. Are we all together? To the extent Abu Bakr knew the Prophet's face, he even knew how many white hair he had. He counted it. One, two, three, four. No one knew the way Abu Bakr knew the Prophet. You all know the famous story when the Prophet ﷺ stood up on the pulpit and he was doing khutbah uh, for the Sahabas, he was doing a khutbah. And then he said, Abdun khayyarahullahu, a slave, Allah gave him the choice between this dunya and the hereafter. And the slave chose the hereafter. And no one else understood what the Prophet meant by this except who? Abu Bakr. And Abu Bakr started crying. And Abu Sa'id al Khudri said, I looked at Abu, um, Abu Bakr and I said, Why is he crying for? All that the Prophet said was, A slave, Allah gave him the choice between this dunya and the hereafter. And the slave chose the hereafter. What is there to cry about? But the Prophet was talking about himself. And no one understood that except Abu Bakr. Because you see, when you live with somebody for so long, you know what they mean by their statements. Even if they don't speak directly, they're indirect and everything, you'll understand it. It's after you spend a lot of time with them. And that's why Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, he said, Wallahi, Abu Bakr was the most knowledgeable one from amongst us. He knew the Prophet the most. So the same way, the Prophet knew Abu Bakr very well. So when he saw him from far, he said, Abu Bakr has gone into a, di a dispute, an argument with someone. Abu Bakr came. Abu Bakr stood right next to the Prophet والسلام, and he said, Ya Rasulullah, what took place between me and Abu Bakr? Uh, me and Umar. Me and Umar had a conflict. And I ran to him for forgiveness and he refused. Look at the quality Abu Bakr had. Abu Bakr's quality is fascinating. He did not say that Umar is a bad person and he's a demon and he's a shaitan and he started the fight and I told him none of that. He didn't, that's not why Abu Bakr came. This shows you the heart of the Sahabas. It's not really why he came. The reason why he came was he wanted the Prophet to speak to Umar for him to give, forgive him. That's you realize their heart. Huh? Even though they had a conflict, he said, Ya Rasulullah, speak to Umar. Tell him to forgive me. Because he knows this, this conflict that they have, when it comes to the day of judgment, it's, it's problems, right? And the best chance for forgiveness is when? Dunya. To solve everything, that's what the Prophet said, min al to free yourself from anything or anybody whilst you're still alive. Just ask the people to forgive you. Are you there? Are you guys paying attention? No. Look what the Prophet said, Lakin. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he listened to Abu Bakr. When Abu Bakr finished, Umar, on the other hand, he went to Abu Bakr's house. After a few, after a little bit, Umar felt guilty. My brother asked for forgiveness. And I never forgave him after he asked me for forgiveness. He went to Abu, Abu, Abu Bakr's house. And his wife said, Abu Bakr is not here, She's, he's gone. He knew where he went straight away. He knew that he went to the Prophet. So he said, okay. Now Abu Bakr standing, and then Umar comes from far distance. The narration mentions what? فَتَمَعَرَ وَجْهُ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ The Prophet's face was changed and he became so angry. And the Prophet was fuming, he was angry. When Abu Bakr saw that, he didn't say, Alhamdulillah, the Prophet's on my side. Mm -mm. What did he do? فَجَثَ عَلَى رُكْبَتَيْهِ Abu Bakr fell on his knees and he said, Ana الذي بدأت. Ya Rasulullah, it wasn't Umar who started the fight. It was me. I was the one who was wrong. I did the mistake. It was really my mistake. I shouldn't have done that, Ya Rasulullah. I am the one who did a mistake. Abu Bakr is better than Umar. A lot. But just because you're better than someone doesn't mean you're always right. Huh? When he fell on his knees and he said, Ya Rasulullah, Ana الذي بدأت. The Prophet didn't listen to Abu Bakr. The Prophet was still angry. When Umar came, the Prophet told off all of the companions. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, Abu Bakr believed in me at the time that you all chose to disbelieve in me. All of you guys here took Islam late. 
Abu Bakr, as soon as I, I said, I'm a messenger from Allah, I'm a prophet from Allah, he said, yes, you are. He never questioned me. Not only that, وَوَاسَانِي بِنَفْسِهِ وَمَالِهِ He took care of me through his wealth and his family. Abu Bakr, what did he do? When the Prophet was migrating from Mecca to Medina, who was the person who helped the Prophet ﷺ? Huh? Who was Abu Bakr? It was Abu Bakr's wife. Abu Bakr's children. His daughter, Asma bint Abi Bakr, you know the role that she played in the Hijrah. Even Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Bakr, who wasn't a Muslim at that time, he was the lookout. He wasn't even a Muslim. But he took care of his father. Asma was the one climbing the mountain to bring the food to the Prophet and Abu Bakr. The family of Abu Bakr took care of the Prophet ﷺ. And this shows us another thing which is anybody who's ever done good for you, you never forget them. The quality that the Prophet showed here, which is Abu Bakr stood for me, helped me and cared for me. Then the Prophet, look what he said to the companions. هَلْ أَنْتُمْ تَارِكُوا لِي صَحِبِي are you guys not going to leave my companion alone for me? It's like, are the rest not companions? But why did the Prophet specifically call Abu Bakr only the companion here? He's the best of them all. This, this story, the narration mentioned Abu Darda, do you know what he said after that? He said, from that day onwards, no one ever upset Abu Bakr. Now, what I want you to all understand from this story, even though it was, it was a side point, what is it I want you to know from this story? That there's always going to be conflict in life. Even the greatest of people had conflicts. Huh? One time the Prophet ﷺ had a conflict with his wives and he had to leave the house for 29 nights, the Prophet. And he slept somewhere else, alayhi For 29 nights, the Prophet had khilaf shadid with his own wives. That's a long story, it's in Hadith Sahih al-Bukhari. How long? 29 nights the Prophet was away from his house. That's a shahar. It was a shahar. We're talking about Aisha, Zainab, Umm Salama, everything. You know where the Prophet slept? He slept on a grass outside from his own home. This is another story for another time, inshaAllah ta'ala. Okay? So what did we learn? The moral of the story was what? وَلَا يَزَالُونَ مُخْتَلِفِينَ إِلَّا مَنْ رَحِمَ رَبُّكَ Khilafat and disputes and argumentations will forever exist between any and everybody, sah? And this, inshallah ta'ala, is the... But then what is must? What is a must? Ah, but what is a must? If you've done a mistake, you go to Allah for forgiveness. And you ask the person you've wronged, forgive me for what I've said and done to you. So anyways, Uthman radiallahu anhu, he said, Bayna ana jalisun, I was sitting down fi dhillin uttumin min atami. I was sitting under a shade of a, a building. Marra aliyya Umaru, Umar went by radiallahu anhu, fasallama aliyya, he gave me salam. When he gave me salam, falam ashur, I didn't even realize, annahu marra, wala sallama. I didn't even know Umar went by, and I don't know, he gave me salams. Fantalaqa Umaru radiallahu anhu, Umar went by, and he went to who? حتى دخل على أبي بكر هي أنت دون أبي بكر. لك رسالة أبو بكر ما يعجبك أني مررت على عثمان فسلمت عليه فلم يرد علي السلام. يعني I went to Abu Bakr. I went to Uthman. I gave him salams, my brother, but he never responded to me. He never gave me salams in return. وأقبل هو وأبو بكر في في ولاية أبي بكر حتى سلم علي جميعا. So then guess what happened? عمر رضي أبو بكر went to Uthman. And he said to him, Ja'ani akhuka Umar. Your brother uh, came to me, Umar. فذكر أنه مر عليك فسلم He told me that he came by you and he gave you salam. فلم ترد عليه his salam. And he never, you never responded. فما الذي حملك على ذلك? Why did you do what you did? Again, another thing we learn, which is if somebody tells you something about somebody else, verify. Person might have another explanation. You tell me something about Salma Ibrahim. I need to make sure that what you're saying about Salman is true. It could be a lie. You could be misinforming me. It could, it could, it could, it could. There are many possibilities. Ah. What I need to do is I need to ask Salman, why did you do what you did? 
Salman now has the right to say, no, that didn't happen. Or it happened, but my reason is this, 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 this. إِنَّ هَذَا أَخِي لَهُ تِسْعٌ وَتِسْعُونَ نَعْجَةٌ وَلِيَ نَعْجَةٌ وَاحِدَةٌ You will know the story of the two men that came to Dawood alayhi salam. Dawood listened to one of them, but he didn't listen to the other one. And he failed the test, Dawood alayhi salam. Ah. He only listened to one, he didn't listen to the other one, and he gave the judgment straight away. Ah. The moral of that story is what? There's two sides of it. There's two sides of the story. Listen to, when he asked him that question, فَقُلْتُ وَاللَّهِ مَا شَعَرْتُ أَنَّكَ مَرَتَ بِي وَلَا سَلَّمْتَ Allahu Akbar. It was so easy. This man just said, brother, Omar, I didn't know you came by me. I didn't even, I didn't even know you gave me salams. Huh? Are we all together? I didn't even know you gave me salams. And I didn't even know you went by me. And then look what Abu Bakr said straight away. Sadaqa Uthman waqad shagalaka an dhalika amrun. He said, yes, you told the truth, Uthman. Again, he didn't say, oh, no, 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 you're not telling me. Be honest, man. You saw him and he went by you and you didn't want to give him salam. Just be honest. He didn't say that. Because that would just exacerbate the problem and make, create even a bigger issue. The person's told you the truth. Just take the, what the person told you, right? Sah. Abu Bakr said, Sadaqa Uthman. Uthman told the truth. Something, something was preoccupying him. Then look what Abu Bakr said to him. Something has preoccupied you. What is it? Umar, Abu Bakr said, yes, some, Uthman said, yes, something was preoccupying me. Something was on my mind. I was busy. That's why I didn't realize Umar went by. He said, what is it? And then Uthman, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, the thing that was on my mind is, Tawfiya, ame tawaffa Allahu nabiyyahu. Allah took nabiyya Muhammad. قبل أن نسأله before we could ask the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام عن نجاة هذا الأمر before we could ask him about success in the affairs that we're going through you, do you all know when the Prophet died what happened? when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم died ارتد ارتد قبائل من العرب Thousands of people left Islam. They said that if Nabi Muhammad is dead, oh, everything's over. Khalas. We don't have to do anything anymore, sah? Some people, they left Islam. They walked away from Islam. Sah? Some people refused to pay the zakat. They said, we're not going to give Abu Bakr a zakat. We used to give the zakat to the Prophet. Nabi Muhammad is dead. We're not going to give Abu Bakr a zakat. Uh, who, who does he think? He is for us to give him the zakat. Ah. And that's what Abu Bakr said, Wallahi la uqatilannahum. Wallahi I will fight with all of them until they pay me the zakat. Ah. Abu Bakr I will fight every single one of them until they give me the zakat. Nah. He said that, he said that. Umar came to him and said, don't do that. And he said, Wallahi. لو منعوني عقالا كانوا يؤدونها إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لقاتلتهم. If they used to give the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم a rope, a عقال, you know the عقال, the black one they put on their head, which is what they used to use to tie their camel with. You know the black thing they put on their head. It was used to tie the camel with it. Back in the days. Now they styled it out. They put it in their head and everything. Abu Bakr said that rope. If they used to give it to the Prophet, and now that the Prophet's dead, they refuse to give it to me, I will fight with them until they give it to me. Umar then said, Abu Bakr, don't do that. Guess what? Everybody went against Abu Bakr. And he was by himself that day. Abu Bakr said, no. Umar, everybody, they said, don't. He said, I will. He said, I will. And then he recited the hadith, Umirtu an uqatil an nas, hatta yashadu an la ilaha illallah, wa yuqeem as-salah, wa yu'ti al-zakah. Fa'idha fa'alu thalika asamu minni dima'ahum wa amwalahum illa bihaq al-islami wa hisabuhum ala Allahi ta'ala. Are we all together? Am I making sense? 
which shows in Islam, by the way, are you all listening? In Islam, there are punishments and consequences to actions as well. Sah. If someone steals in Islam, there's a consequences. If somebody commits fornication and adultery in Islam, there is a what? There's a consequences. So it's not like there isn't consequences. There's consequences in Islam. When Uthman said that, Uthman said, تَوَفَّى اللَّهُ نَبِيَّهُ قَبْلَ أَنْ نَسْأَلَوْا عَنْ نَجَاتِ, عن, عن نجاتي هذا الأمر. That the Prophet's soul was taken before we could even ask him of what? The success of this matter. Abu Bakr said, قَدْ سَأَلْتُهُ عَنْ ذَلِكُ Abu Bakr said, no, I asked him. I already asked him about how we can... Then Abu Bakr said, فَقُمْتُ إِلَيْهِ I stood up to him. فَقُلْتُ I said to him, بِأَبِي أَنْتَ وَأُمِّي I will sacrifice my mother and I, my father for you, O Messenger of Allah. I will choose you over my mom and dad. Of course we choose our mother, the Prophet over our mom and our dad. So if there was an option, are we all together? If there was an option where the Prophet would be taking his life or your mom and dad's life, which one would you choose? You would have to take the the, the, you have to take the life of your mom and your dad to be taken. Ah. And you have to choose a prophet over your mom and dad. Ah. He said, Are we all together? Are we all together? No, Uthman is saying this to Abu Bakr, sorry. Uthman said, when Abu Bakr said, قَدْ سَأَلْتُ عَنْ ذَلِكَ When Abu Bakr said, I asked him this question. Uthman stood up and he said, بِأَبِي أَنْتَ أُمِّي To who? To Abu Bakr. أَنْتَ أَحَقُّ بِيَا You have the most rights. Tell us about it. And then look what Abu Bakr said. قُلْتُ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ مَنْ نَجَاتُ هَذَا الْأَمْرِ This matter of ours, what's the success? فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ The Prophet said, مَنْ قَبِلَ مِنِّي الْكَلِمَةَ الَّتِي عرضت علي عمي فردها علي فهي له نجاته. Do you not just see how in, how Uthman was preoccupied and was just thinking to the extent that Abu Bakr Umar went by and say salam alaikum to him and he didn't even know that his brother Umar went by. That how this preoccupied Uthman's heart and mind success the way out of the situation. صح. When we know Uthman is already in Jannah. صح. The Prophet already said, وَعُثْمَانٌ فِي الْجَنَّةِ The Prophet even said in another hadith, مَا ضَرَّ عُثْمَانَ مَا عَمِلَ بَعْدَ الْيَوْمِ After this day today, whatever Uthman does, it won't harm. I'll tell you guys another story. There was a man that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he said, kill him, even if he's in the Kaaba. The Prophet said, about a man, kill him, وَلَوْ مُتَعَلِّقٌ بِأَسْتَارِ الْكَعْبَةِ even if this man is holding on to the cloth of the Kaaba, Prophet said, kill him. Listen, the Sahabas, all of them. This man was wanted. Execution. Huh? Guess what happened? This man was related to that man. He took this man and he brought him to the Prophet. And then the man is standing in front of the Prophet now. The man stuck his hand out to the Prophet and he said, Ubayi'uka. Uthman said to the Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, Ubayi'uhu. Give him bay'ah, pledge of allegiance. The Prophet turned away. The man came to the Prophet's face again, stuck his hand out. Uthman said, Bayi'u, Ya Rasulullah. Prophet turned away again. Prophet turned away. The man came again to the face of the Prophet. The third time. The Prophet took his hand and he gave him bay'ah. Then when the, the man gave the, the Prophet gave the bay'ah to the man, the Prophet said to the Sahabas, was there not amongst you a man who when they saw me avoiding this man, 
And I had already said to you guys to kill him wherever you see him. Was there not amongst you a person who would stand up and kill him? And then the Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, why didn't you wink? The Sahaba they said, Ya Rasulullah, why do you not wink? Wait. Sah? Then the Prophet said, A Nabi, a Nabi, he could not have that type of eye. Islam, you're not allowed to do that eye. It's haram. It's khiana. It's what? Deception, Jamila. To wink to somebody. Like, Ibrahim, you can't do that. Tahasiya. You can't do that. That kind of eye, okay? So, this shows us that the thought of this issue, which is success, is an issue that what? Was on the mind of who? Another example, Abdullah ibn Rawaha, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, anna kana fi baytihi, wa inda zawjihi, fabaka. Abdullah ibn Rawaha was what? He was in his house one day, and he was next to his wife. And guess what happened? He cried. He cried. The companion Abdullah ibn Rawaha cried. His wife said to him, فَسَأَلَتُهُ مَا الَّذِي أَبْكَاكَ She said to him, why are you crying for, babes? She said to him, why are you crying for, honey? Are we all together? These alfad, yani good words between, between the, part, the two partners, yeah, is, is good. Even in the Quran, Allah used it, right? In, uh, when, she, when the wife of uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, uh, the angel came and they were told the news that their wife, his wife is going to have a, a child. What is it that she said? She said, In hada ba'li shaykha. She used the word ba'al. Did it say rajul? And that word shows what? She referred to him as a what? A nice word. In other words, Ibrahim's old man. She's Say basically, my honey is an old man. Yeah, Jamila. We're all together. So, فَسَأَلَتُ مَا الَّذِي أَبْكَاكَ So she asked him, what is it that what? That made you cry. He said, ذَكَرْتُ قَوْلَ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَ I remember the verse of Allah. وَإِن مِّنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا كَانَ عَلَىٰ رَبِّكَ حَتْمًا مَقَضِيًّا I remember that ayah. ثُمَّ نُنَجِّ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ وَنَذَرُ الظَّالِمِينَ فِيهَا جِثِيًّا Hey, what, what ayah is it, Salma? What surah is it? Surah to Maryam, correct. Are we all together? What does this ayah mention? وَإِن مِّنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا Every single one of you is going to go to the hellfire. كَانَ عَلَىٰ رَبِّكَ حَتْمًا مَقْضِيًّا This is something that's going to take place. This is talking about the Salat. The Salat is on top of Jahannam. Everyone's going to go over Jahannam. Then Allah says, ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا The people who are going to make on the Sirat are who? The people of Taqwa. And Allah then says, وَنَذَرُوا ظَالِمِينَ فِيهَا جِتِيَةً What about the criminals, the wrongdoers? They're going to suffer that day. But the narration, what does it mention after that? It says, فَلَا أَدْرِي أَأَنْ فَلَا أَدْرِي أَنَنْجُوا مِنْهَا أَمْ لَا Abdullah ibn Rawaha said, I don't know if I'm going to make it from that Sirat. Am I going to fall into Jahannam? Because if you fall from the Sirat, Jahannam is on top of it, is below it. I'm going to fall in Jahannam. Yeah. You have to understand, people are not of, يعني, the people are of different levels, Ibrahim. Allah says, as he said, ثم أورثنا الكتاب الذين اصطفينا فمنهم ومنهم 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 سابق بالخيرات بإذن الله The people are مراحل and درجات صح أسيا So some people are سابق سابق He goes fast He's going to go quick The ظالم لنفسي He's a Muslim لكن he's, he's bad He did some mistakes And then there's what? There are criminals and the wrongdoers 
يعني the ظالم is the disbeliever sorry ومنهم مقتصد there's the one in the middle the ظالم is the believer as well sorry ومنهم ظالم هي is the believers because جنات عدن is mentioned after that they're all going to enter Jannah are we all together look at these two stories that I just mentioned the story of Uthman and Affan and the story of who Abdullah ibn Rawaha what were they worried about what were they concerned about no they were concerned about are they going to be successful? Ananju. That's the question he asked. Abdullah ibn Rawaha. Are we all together? So this is the reason why this topic should be spoken about. Ways in which you can find success in this world in the hereafter. The poet he said, مَا بَالُ دِينِكَ تَرْضَى أَن تُدَنِّسَهُ وَثَوْبُكَ الدَّهْرَ مَغْسُولٌ مِّنَ الدَّنَسِ ترجو النجاة ولم تسلك مسالكها إن السفينة لا تجري على اليابس صح؟ The poet he said ما بال دينك ترضى أن تدنسه Why is it that your religion you you want to destroy it and you want to taint it وثوبك الدهر مغسول من الدنس but your clothing is always clean you, you, when you are in a, a clothes you wash it you iron it but your religion you taint it ترجو النجاة you're looking for success وَلَمْ تَسْلُكْ مَسَالِكَهَا And you're not going to take its path. إِنَّ السَّفِينَةَ لَا تَجْرِ عَلَى الْيَابِسِ The boat does not sail on the shore. صح? So, what are we going to do inshaAllah ta'ala? What are we going to do? We're going to talk about this topic. وَقَدْ أَحْسَنَ الْقَائِلُ Another poet, he said, he said, وَحَسْرَتَاهُ تَقَضَّ الْعُمُرُ وَانْصَرَمَتْ Your time has finished and it's coming, it's by, it's gone by. سَاعَتَاهُ أَمَ سَاعَاتُهُ بين الذل العجز والكسل والقوم قد أخذوا درب النجاة وقد صاروا إلى المطلب الأعلى على مهل يعني وحسرته يعني regret be for me تقضى العمر وانصرمت your time has finished سلمى and it's gone by ساعات بين الذل والعجز والكسل you spent your time between humiliation and laziness and distraction وَالْقَوْمُ قَدْ أَخَذُوا دَرْبَ النَّجَأَةِ وَقَدْ And there are other righteous people and the good people. What did they do? They took success. صَارُوا إِلَى الْمَطْلَبِ الْأَعْلَى عَلَى مَهْلِ They reached their goal with, يعني, in a collective, يعني, composed manner. So that's the muqaddima and the introduction for this uh, series, inshaAllah ta'ala. I ask Allah tabarak wa ta'ala bimannihi wa karami. That Allah forgives us for our shortcoming and our mistakes and our errors. Anything I might have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and Shaytan and Allah and His Messenger are both free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdi. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh.